Welcome back to the 31 Day Spiritual Upgrade Challenge. I am Victoria Bond. I am delighted to be here. Hashtag replay. If you are catching us up on the replay, I'm happy to be here. Oh my goodness, what a day. I'm so excited to bring this concept to you. So let me know, where are you coming in from? And how many, how many of these sessions have you caught? So we're on day 16. Day freaking 16. If you're jumping on, make sure you come and say hello. I'm mixing up our times now. Keeping you on your toes. And you never know when Victoria Bond is going to go live. I tell you, I go live when it feels good for me. So welcome. If you were here, come and say hello. Day 16, oh my goodness, one of my favorite, favorite topics is talking about space. Has anybody heard of Joe Dispenza? Let me know. Pop it in the chat box. Have you heard of Joe Dispenza? So he talks about the space between the space between the space between the space. <laughs> Go check out his nighttime meditation. I often sleep to it. So to we've we've covered so many things i'm not even going to go into it right but one of the things that i talk about a lot in magnificent mediumship is creating space so i have this ability of hearing people's minds i have a, i also have a habit of saying stop <laughs> in the middle of readings um and going okay stop you got to get out of your head i was once at a retreat and i was we were doing oracle card readings i was doing some mediumship mentoring and one of the ladies um i love her she's worked with me off and on for years and she was just like looking at the card and reading the card and i just went stop look right in front of you look at the person right in front of you create the space by getting out of your head coming into your heart expanding your heart to connect in with that person have you ever sat there before and maybe you're having a cup of coffee with a friend or whatever, or maybe you're sitting at the dinner table and your partner picks up their cell phone or like your friend is picking up their cell phone or like going, oh, yeah, 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 and looking elsewhere. And you're trying to tell them something really important and your heart is connected in and maybe you're going, hey, I remember doing this with a friend going, hey, I've got to tell you something. This is really, really important. They go, yeah, 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 and changing the subject. And I'm like, there's no connection here because there's no space because the real estate in your brain is taken up with just chatter and constant thoughts and addiction of thoughts. So creating space helps you be a better medium. The highly intelligent humans that have survived by using their brain, <laughs> some of us have used humor, some of us have used creativity, some of us have used our brains and are quick-witted and smart. They are the clients that I'm like, hey man, we need to get you into your heart because it doesn't matter how brainy you are it doesn't matter if you're getting a plus grades that's not how mediumship works that's not how spiritual enlightenment works you know we have so many spiritual gurus in the world that didn't even have a day of education in their life now little children are the most spiritual beings ever right they play they are in love with life and consciousness itself they know that they're spirit they play with spirit they've got spirit guides and they don't think about it they just do so what would it take to create the space that if you did create the space for you, you would actually have the space to be and see and create? We talked about creativity yesterday, the art of creativity, and I'm going a little bit deeper in my upgrade. From tomorrow, I'm cutting so many distractions. I'm only ever going to look at my phone if I'm checking my telegram for my one-to-ones or coming into this community. There's going to be no scrolling. There's going to be no looking. There's going to be nothing unless I'm like, I'm direct focus on what I'm doing. And I loved um, Marty. She, I was just reading. I always come in and read the comments, right? So comment below if you're here. Hello. <laughs> Let me know if you're here. How many lives have you caught up on? How are you enjoying the challenge? Let's have a conversation. Um, and so I, I was reading, Marty was saying, you know, she doesn't have any of her apps, her Instagram, her Facebook or anything. She has none of that on her cell phone. She has no distractions. If she doesn't have distractions, I think she said she went and like got 
some wood and made herself an outside bath, right? If we cut, I talk about this all the time in my mastermind as well. If we trim the fat, if we get rid of the distractions, if we've got a goal and a target, we create the space. We, you'll be so surprised at what happens in your world if you create the space to communicate with spirit, to communicate with yourself, to communicate with your loved ones, to be really present when you are with your loved ones, when you're with a loved one. It's like, are you on your cell phone scrolling because you're, you're bored? Scrolling at what? What are you fucking doing, right? Do you guys know what I'm talking about here? Maybe you know someone who does this. Maybe you're like, oh, I've done that once or twice. Um, it becomes a habit and then we become when we become so i've talked so much today so my, my words are kind of like <laughs> leaving so is my voice um when we become aware of the habits of the dirty little habits that we have all the dirty little distractions or maybe they're not even dirty maybe they're just distractions and maybe they're just habits then we can nip them in the bud and create the space but here's the thing that you need to know so many human beings are absolutely petri I know because I was one of them petrified of creating space my mom used to say oh I like the noise I go to my parents house the TV's going the radio's going um, then the TV's going in the lounge don't remember growing up like that I think we only ever had one TV they like noise my mom likes noise she likes busyness she hates not being busy and I'm like, wow, how do you think? How do you have the space? Oh, I don't have the space because if I had the space, I'd have to think and then have to think about the things I don't want to think about, go down memory lane or start working on the timelines. And in my line of work, I say, I want you to have the space so you can connect in with your own divine spirit, so you can connect in with your soul, so you can connect in with your higher self. My teachings are not about teaching you lingo or these are the tools that you've got to use for the rest of your life. I'm like, what are your tools? Here are mine. You can use them if you like, but let's create yours. And this is what I do in MM. I'm like, this is my clearing statement. This is my process. But what is yours? What is yours? Because you're your own person. And without the space to create, without the, without the creativity to live, without the, the, have you ever not had mind chatter? Right? There, I remember seven, eight years ago, there wasn't a space that I didn't have mind chatter. I was constantly fucking thinking. And now I, I'm always catching myself. Oh, there's a passenger. Oh, hi. I talk about this in the beginning, right? The beginning of the 31 day challenge. I'm like, holy moly, there is always somebody saying, oh, maybe you should have dinner now. No, don't have dinner now. You might get hungry later. Do you think you should have a cup of tea? No, you've already had a cup of tea. Oh my God, you need to message that person. Oh, okay. So oh, if I don't message them, will they get shitty? If I don't message them, maybe I should message them now, but maybe it's too late now. You're constantly talking to yourself. What if you had an ability to stop thinking? Thinking is a great thing. It's a great tool, but that is what it is. It's a tool. Just like human design is a tool. Just like tools and processes and books, right? Books, these, these here, they're tools. Oil is a tool. This is a tool. But we, we, we give it too much power. We give tools and books and other people too much power. What if you came into yourself? Let me know what's popping. Let me know if this is resonating because I'm just riffing on what it means to have space. And this is what came through. Anywhere, we're going to do a clearing, anywhere that you're not allowing yourself to have space because you're too afraid of finding the space that you may have or actually finding out who you are because you're not sure if you even want to know who you are because you work so hard to create who you are now and what if who you are is not actually who you thought you were and maybe you don't want to disappoint people. Anywhere that you've done that or doing that or having projections of other people on you and being that form rather than actually being the essence of who you truly desire to be are you willing to shift that are you willing to change that are you willing to transmute that to drop that are you willing to transform your energy your dna to create the space within the space to create the space with between your eyebrows. I love how Joe Dispenza says that. 
Create the space between your eyebrows in space. Create the space in your heart in space. You, I'm going to get weird now, you are literally your own motherfucking uni universe. And I'm not talking about <laughs> some weird religions where they go, and if you're really good and have all these lives and you get to have your own universes. No, nope, not talking about that. I'm talking about now, right now, right here, your own, your, your own universe. Magic and miracles. I was telling you about um, Ayana. Ayana, sorry, I always say that wrong. Um, and the magic and the miracles of her coming to stay at my house. She does the sand magic and the little fairy bottles. Do you know what she said to me? What my daughter said to me? Because Ayana came to stay with us in my studio. We did sand magic. It was all very random and very spontaneous, which works very well for a projector and a manifester. We ended up having like fish and chips on the beach and doing a dragon sand castle. This was all this year, I think. Was it all this year? And, um, she had done a lot of my programs. We were like, it was so amazing. It was so connected. And we did these little like fairy magic bottles. And we literally like wrote our wishes on them and all these different things. And my daughter said to me, and she has no idea we've been talking about this. No idea. She said, do you remember when that beautiful lady came to stay with us, mum? And she did the fairy course. And she said, do you know what my little magic bottle said? And I was like, what did it say? Well, you know, if you want to tell me, <laughs> you type of thing. And she said, "I really hope that our, I really hope that our friend Amy gets better." And I went, "Oh my goodness!" And here we are now doing this upgrade. And my daughter's made a big basket, and she's raffling it off. She's walking the streets, like, you know, people are uh, going in for this two hundred dollar raffle that we've created. You know, just here in our local town, and we're doing this to support our friend Amy and. That was her wish. That that was magic. That was that's a miracle. To be able to connect with people every single day to create the space. If I hadn't have created the space, I would have been like, no, I can't do sand magic. No, you can't come and stay and we can't hang out. I don't have space. I don't have space. I don't have space. But over the last year I've created a phenomenal amount of space. I have consciously been working on myself every single day of my life, whether I've been in my bleed. Oh, look, now I can see comments. Ayana, it's yours. <laughs> That's your comment. I would have said something about me and mine, but my daughter said something about having somebody heal, you know. So when we create the space, the miracles, we talked about miracles yesterday, didn't we? We talked about magic and we talked about miracles and we talked about, um, oh, Putting your energy into that wish so immense. Yeah, it was the most amazing time together with your family. We had a spa together. Oh my God, it was so amazing. So when we create the space, the universe is like, oh, look, there's some space. We can give them wealth. We can give them health. We can, they're available to receive it, right? They're able to receive it. And this is what we create when we create challenges like this this is what we're creating in magnificent mediumship is the space of and all of my containers it's like are you willing and ready for the magic to come are you willing and ready to stop micromanaging your own universe are you ready to see i'm so excited like right now my family's gone away for like two full days i get to create and i'm creating for me I could say, I want to save the world, I want to help, and but no, my art and my creativity is for me, and then I will share it and invite you to come into what it is that I'm creating, right? So when we create the space, and I don't mean when we're sitting there going, uh, watching Netflix, that's not creating space. I talked about this today in my mastermind. Out of our hundred, out of our percent, out of our spare time. So I've got so much going on right now in my head because there's so many. I can feel all your thoughts. <laughs> so out of our spare time, we should be spending eighty percent of our time educating ourselves and twenty percent of the time, like entertaining ourselves. And I had to look at myself and go, hmm, how much am I doing of that? And it's only in the last month I've been really educating myself, like hours a day educating myself because I created the space to educate myself and then take action on what I'm educating myself. I am no longer watching television or binging 
or staying up too late on my screen. Like I've got some really good disciplines and devotion practices because my devotion is for my future self. I've got to create the space. So about a year ago, I stopped taking one-to-one -one clients on. And I went from having about 16 or 16, 21. I don't know. I had a lot. I think I may have had 21 at one stage. Um, I don't remember. And I loved it. I loved every single client I had because being in an intimate relationship with a client is very powerful. I love waking up and having like messages on my phone and having my morning coffee and messaging my clients, you know, on an intimate level. But Spirit said to me, Victoria, it's time to go deep within, to go down to the bottom of the ocean and be the mermaid that you be. And I'm like, what? I am my clients. Like I, I felt an identity through what I was doing with my leadership. And I was also doing lots of different programs. I loved it. I love it. But I didn't allow for much space because I didn't want a lot of space. I'm really passionate about what I do. And Spirit was like, it's time to create space. So I have spent the last year and a half creating huge amounts of space for myself, saying yes more and saying no more. Only saying yes with what resonates with me and saying no to everything else because we must have the space to do what feels good for us. And then the spirit comes through. Spirit comes through when we can hear. But we can't hear if we're constantly like consuming right there's a difference between education and entertainment and I'm, I'm entertainment's great but we need to have a little look at ourselves you know am i creating much space or am i just filling up my life with busyness and i've got examples for this i know so many people that will go oh i've left that job or i've got rid of a lot of my clients like different jobs i'm thinking of all sorts of jobs here and then they, their time gets filled up again. Something else comes in and fills up that time. So as I observe people, I was like, no matter what these people are doing, they tend to have another drama or more busyness and their schedule is always full up. So it's like a, a glass ceiling. We have it with money as well. We have a ceiling with money. We have a ceiling with busyness. So what I was able to do by consciously having this awareness, I was like, I want to deepen my relationship with spirit, with God, source consciousness, universe, whatever your favorite flavor is i want to come in here as a projector who's very open i can get lost very quickly very quickly in another person so i require a lot of detoxing a lot of space a lot of deep dive into the bottom of the ocean i'll come up in three months time and then i'll sing to the world right and that's what i'm doing now is i'm starting to sing to the world after being in a deep dive so i've created the space and whatever the universe, whatever I ask for, I get. So I asked for pretty much, okay, once the end of these contracts are ended, I am ready just to have like two or three one-to-ones. And I had two clients out of all of the clients that said to me, please, can I keep working with you? Please. And I was like, does that feel good for me? Because when we are in business or when we are communicating with spirit or whatever we're doing, it has to feel good for us. It's not a, I have to do this because the spirit came to me, so I've got to give a message. We're so used to freaking responding all the time, right? We're so used to responding instead of listening to what we actually want. Do I want to go to the beach and do those sandcastles with Ayana? Hmm. Yes, I absolutely do. <laughs> so I did, right? But so many times we just go, oh, yeah, or oh, no, I can't. Like we, we just respond instantly because we don't have the space to feel. So for me, I'm so deep in myself now. I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know when I'm available for spirit. I know what my gifts are. I'm just, I'm just getting started because I've got the space to do that. But I used to be so busy, being busy all the time. I had no space to fucking think. And mothers know what I'm talking about here, right? There's a time when your children are little and you're like, I just don't have any 
space and you take what you can and then you start saying to the universe and you can do this now if you feel like you're kind of like don't have a lot of space you say universe i would like to have some space to work on me to go deeper into me so i can work on my abundance codes on my spiritual codes on upgrading myself of going through my rebirth i've been through two rebirths in a year and a half two because i had the space to do it to go ever i needed to go into to go through a birthing process to go through into oh there you are marty <laughs> i was just talking about you before oh hello stephanie okay um i tend to get stuck in others uncomfortableness and do little things anyway to get the uncomfortable out of the way I really need to stop that so it's like when i create the space i become the space when i become the space I am free to expand even further into space. And what I realize is, and this is this is when MM all dropped in, is I get to manipulate time and space. Some people go, you're so lucky, you've got all the time. You know, I used to say that to people, oh, you're so lucky, you've got help with your kids, you're so lucky. This I used to be in a victim consciousness of, well, it's good for you because you get paid more than me, I've got to work harder than you. And then one day I was like, what are these narratives I've got going on? I was like, I'm a hairdresser, so I don't make as much money as you. Nice for you going on holiday, it's just not my reality. I looked at my sister-in-law, I looked at my mother-in-law i looked at people going on holidays and i was like well it's nice for you because you guys are lawyers <laughs> it's nice for you because you're wealthy or whatever right you've got more money than me um anyone who had more money than me was richer than me wealthier than me and one day i was like this isn't space this isn't kindness this is like envy and what if i had the space to create what if I was connected in with God, source consciousness, with creator, with spirit, with myself? What if I knew who the fuck I was? I've never given myself two seconds to even go, who actually am I? Because if life is busy. You go to school. You leave school. You're working while you're at school, right? Because to get the billabong backpack, you know, you have to be able to get it all the togs. Like, you know, mum and dad can't afford it. So you're working from 12 years old. Then you're leaving school. Then you're managing because you've got your boyfriend as well as working while you're going to tech and then having to try to like, like go on the bus every single day. And then you're doing the best you possibly can doing work experience for free while you're trying to get a job. All of a sudden you're 40 fucking years old and you're like, Jesus, two kids later, five houses later. What the hell did I do? So I get it. I get the, I get the ship. I get the train. I get the, the hamster wheel, but it's simple. It's really simple. We've all got the same amount of time and space. Um, time, time, sorry. We've all got the same amount of time. Yeah, it's this jungle. It's this fuckery that keeps you stuck like this. But if you want to be spiritually upgraded, you need to realize that you are the universe. You need to realize that you have the space within your heart and that you have the control over it. Not micromanaging. Not micromanaging the universe. But you have the ability, even if you have children, even if you've got a side hustle, even if you've got a, um, a busy life, like every single one of you have. Some of you are homeschooling, right? And working and creating and doing all the house stuff. We're all busy. Busy is boring. But space is freedom. How do we create the space and then allow for God, universe, source, consciousness, creator, higher self, to flood down through us and gift us the abundance, the ideas pop. Oh, you know, I had an idea the other day. I'm driving, not even thinking. Because I'm creating space. I'm just mindlessly driving. Tree. <laughs> this little voice. Tree. Road. Car. <laughs> the little hitchhiker that's with me. I'm like, you behave yourself. You know, you, you don't have any, like, say in this. I'm being in consciousness. I'm just being with whatever I was doing. And um, an idea flooded through. And it's something really cool that a lot of people are going to want to jump in. And it's that next level after MM that I've been waiting for. I've been sitting with it for two years and I haven't had the space for it to drop in. And then it went drop, 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 drop. And I'm like, oh, will this idea stay? I don't know. Maybe it floats away. Maybe it stays. Maybe it grows. It's a seed. But I've got to give it the space to see if it takes, just like when we're gardening. 
love to hear from you guys what is dropping in for you do you have the space how is this feeling for you we're going to do a little a little exercise in a moment pop down below what's coming up for you yes we all have the same amount of time it's to trigger the shit out of me because I used to be like, you don't have hard kids like me. You don't have to work all the time. <laughs> I used to think everyone had it easier than me until one day I went, this is a really boring narrative. What if I could change the story? What if I could create a time capsule? What would my future self be saying right now? If I didn't bitch and moan, if I didn't complain, if I just did the things and went, oh, you go on holidays like that? I wonder how I could do that too. Create the space. <gasps> Ideas drop in. Oh my god. Or I would like to buy a hat. You know, the hat thing. I've got a wall of hats here. <coughs> and it started with a thought. I would really like a hat. I don't want to spend $120 on a hat. These hats are they're nice hats. They're not cheap hats, right? I'm all good with some cheap things, but not a hat. <laughs> not on my crown. And I was like, I like that hat. I wonder what it would take to give another hat and another hat and another hat and another hat. And so I've got like one, one, two, three, four. I think I've got like six nice hats and I really do desire more. Um, yes, I have the space and priority in my life. I so agree. Making space is allowing for the magic and creativity. I'm so mad creativity that happen. I've been getting distracted a lot, but when I'm meditating, meditated, ideas have been flowing yeah, because meditation is literally creating the space. And this is where I started. Is I was really triggered when people without children <laughs> who were younger than me told me that, of course, if I want something enough, I can have it because everyone has time. And I was like, you don't understand. I'm up five times a night with my children. They're really hard children. Really, really, really hard children. And... I'm fucking tired. I'm a nightmare if I don't get enough sleep. I go to bed at like 8.30, like if I can, every night. You know, I get up at 5. And I remember this coach, I said to her, I, it's, it's impossible. And she said, I used to travel from New Plymouth to Auckland to do my, or Wellington to Auckland to do my nursing degree. And she was going on and on and on and saying, you got to want it enough. And I thought, you have no idea what you're talking about because I want it, I just don't have the space. When that clicked in, I thought, she's not feeling me, she's not getting this, I decided I had to create the space. You wouldn't see me driving from Auckland to Wellington and back in New Zealand, so it's a, it's a good a good long trip, right? We're talking about like hours and hours and hours and hours of driving because I didn't have the capacity. I didn't know about capacity, I didn't know about nervous systems. I was on the brink, I had a burnout. I was like, burnout, breakdown, like, ah! this person's telling me if I wanted it lot big enough I'll make it happen she doesn't even know what she's fucking talking about so I started at the beginning right and you're probably beyond this I'm imagining if you're in this challenge and what I started doing was like can I how can I find I asked a question how can I find 20 minutes a day to be alone how can I have space how can I look after myself how can I have the space to be alone and all of a sudden the weirdest stuff started happening because I was asking, because I was asking, how can I have the space? How? Please help me. Help me create the space. I, I'm, I'm fucked. I'm exhausted, right? And I'm going on a bit of a tangent here. All of a sudden, someone showed up at my door and said, hey, can we take your kids? Like my friends showed up to the door and said, can we take your kids? Or another friend said, hey, can I have your kids for a play date? Like, all of a sudden, friends were like literally like knocking on my door asking me if they could borrow my children. Who does that? That's what happened. And, and then I'd be like, we'll be back in like an hour. And I'd be like, oh my God. And I'd run to my bedroom and I'd hop in my bed and I'd put on my eye mask and I would just be like, oh. And I would pretend I was dead. Every day, I'd create the space and lie down and pretend I was dead, literally. Even though I was never sleeping, I would go into like this trance meditative state and that was the first time I started creating space. So whether that resonates with you or not, probably not right now, maybe it's resonated with you in the past, finding that little bit of space saved my life. And then I started creating more and more and more. I was like, I can manipulate and play with time and space. 
I get to do what I want, how I want. I get to create energy and flow energy. Be like, hey, can you feel this? Or I would send someone a whole lot of love and energy, right? And then I would be like, hi, how are you? And they're like, I just felt this burst of energy. Did you just do something to me? Or people would message me. Did you just do something? I'd be like, yeah, I just sent you energy. Did you feel it? <laughs> because I was like, holy shit. I am energy. I am space. I am a creator. I'm not just a sinner who was born, who has to redeem herself her whole entire life and pray to God and hope that my sins will be forgiven. Because if that's so, I'm definitely going to hell. I've done some bad shit, right? <laughs> like, I'm a creator. I'm a 3-5. I've got my hands dirty. I've been so messy. So when we're playing with Einstein time, when we are not playing in linear, when we're playing, and this is why when people come to me and they go, I need to work with you, right? So maybe you're a person who's, worked with me in my paid containers if you have been let me know give us a give us a thumbs up or something because I can nearly guarantee you didn't come to me for something tangible usually or if you did you got something different out of it people come to me and go I don't know why I need to work with you I need to work with you how do I work with you how do I work with you and I don't even know why I'm saying this because I don't even really know what you do because I do magic I help you see you because if you see you, if you create the space enough, if you're a projector, I'm like, I'm going to be here for you. And I'm going to probably shove this down your fucking throat until you want to slap me. You need to rest. You need to align. You need to remember who you are. And I repeat the same thing over and over to particular people. And they start settling. They start coming in. They, they were out here holding their spirit, holding their soul like a balloon, right? They're humans down here, but they're holding their soul. And they pull it back in. I said this to one of my clients today. She said, what's the difference that you've seen working with me for the last five months or whatever? And I said, you're like in yourself now. Before, it was like if someone let go of the balloon, you were just off. You're in you're coming in. It's embodiment, spirit embodied into a human. Yeah. Um, the river we found earlier this year is quantum. Time expands. There's portals all over the earth. There's crystalline grids. There's so much I could teach you and tell you and help to for you to remind you. And so many of you have worked with me before, of course. Yeah, I had that gut feeling I had to work with you. And people come along and they go, I don't know why, but I have to do it. Sign me up. I remember um, Sarah, who's coming into MM in September, she's like on a sales call, just like crying, going, oh, my God, I can't not. And I don't know how, but it's going to happen. I'm going to do it. It's a thousand percent yes for me. Her sacral was like, yes. <laughs> you know, there was no doubt because she's like, I know this gut. So coming back around to you, Something's been really popping up for me because I'm training. I've just started training for my half marathon. And of course, I'm going to do a 42K in a year's time. And I'm still in the courage part of that. I'm still freaking out a little bit. I'm like, what have I done? What have I told everyone I'm doing? And what's been really popping up is when we are cheating, we are cheating ourselves. And we know if we've got loose boundaries. We know if we being loosey-goosey with our time I did something really really courageous today because I'm remastering my business right now like I'm going through rebirths and I've, I've been through two in the last year and a half and like I said I've created space so much space I said to spirit why are you creating all space I love my clients bring them all back <laughs> you know like I've, I'm opening up spaces for one-to-one -one because I've got so much space and if you ask any coach they don't usually have so much space they're like you know, we love having clients. I love, love having clients, but I deliberately desired space to go deep into my next level of mastery when it comes to my creativity and my teaching, my art, you know. And um, <sighs> where was I going with this? <laughs> I had like three different threads going on there. I had three different threads going on. I was, oh, yeah, that's right. I was like, there it is. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got writer's block. <laughs> it's time for bed. I've been up since five. No, so what I did is I had to trim the fat. And I had to literally message friends and say, hey, I'm not going to be a messenger, like, at all. 
I've got two different messengers, one for friends and family. There's like literally just like not many people on there. And then I've got my normal one that my team manages because I require so much space. I can't juggle energy. I'm with you. If I'm with you, if I'm not with you, then I'm direct focus into something else. My aura is penetrating. Okay. So I messaged friends today. And I said, FYI, just letting you know, I'm going off messenger. You may not hear from me for a couple of months. And I had to have courage to do that because we love our friends, right? Friends are great. If you need me, let, I let you know I'm here, but I may not message you back straight away or maybe not even for a month. So when we're prioritizing creating space for ourselves, it means where is the noise? Where are the distractions? And even if that means great friendships, you're like, hey, I love you, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> love you from afar because right now I'm going in. And for me, I've been in and, and swimming <laughs> like the freaking mermaid that I am. But now I'm coming up and I've got a song to sing. So to sing that song with the amount of space that I've created, I'm singing the song right now. You can probably feel it. Can you feel it? Can you feel the space within this? Let me know how it feels. Because to be a pure channel, we need to be open. We need to have the space to do so without the thinking, without the fuckery, without the, got to get back to that person, got to think about this. Like, no, I don't want any of that. So my whole family has gone away to give me even more space so I can do my art. Do We're not going to see people doing sand art by just like literally like, oh, quickly, I've only got two minutes. Like there's a dedication to that, right? There is a passion and a purpose when we're reading, when we're creating our art, when we're creating our, Michelle was talking about doing a garden, a Zen garden. When we're, when my, my nail lady, you know, she spent hours crafting my nails, like hours crafting them. They're like really high quality nails, you know, um, we have to give ourselves a space and that means sometimes we need to inform people, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a deep dive, I'm, I'm doing a me, you know, and as mums, a lot of the time we have this mum guilt and we feel that as a collective, but even if it's 20 minutes a day to study, to learn, to go into yourself, yeah, looking, at, and I talk, call them energy leaks um, in, my, in my different programs and essentially it's like, the only thing that really fucking matters, we have to look at, I always teach like, hey, it's you at the top, right? Then it's your partner, and then it's your children, and then it's what's important to you, what's important to you, what's important to you, what's important to you. And mine is like me, and then my husband, because I plan to be with him forever, so he's extremely important, but I'm number fucking one. I have to be, because I'm the captain of the ship, my ship. <laughs> I'm not going to give my power to somebody else, right? I'm my captain of my ship, of my fucking universe, the queen of my castle, and I need the space to recognize myself as that. I'm the creator of my reality. And then there's my husband who I love and adore, and he's just like next level amazing. And then there's my children. So my children will always come first with the logistics of looking after them, feeding them, putting them to bed and all that, that prerogative, that's their prerogative that I do that, right? That's what they deserve because they were birthed here. But my husband is my number one after me and then my children. And then comes my clients and then comes my friends and then comes society. Most people have it around the other way. They have society and then they have friends and then they have work and then they have children. Then they have their husband and then they have themselves. I'm like, why is, I keep thinking, why is everything backwards in this universe? It's like we're upside down in New Zealand, but holy shit, like Everything needs to be turned around. The minute I started working on myself, I started getting funny looks. Victoria's, you know, you should be with your children. Like, I'm like, I'm going away for a few days to work on myself. The first time I went away for two nights, I felt so guilty. I thought I was going to throw up. I honestly, I went like for a 20 minute drive, stayed in a friend's caravan where she looked after me pretty much because I was like burning out. I was like, frying with <laughs> with like adrenal fatigue I was like ah! I was like literally having a nervous system breakdown and I was like I don't think I can stay a second night and her and her husband said you need to stay a second night and I stayed there and it was the first time I'd slept 
in a couple of years, maybe three years. So I felt so guilty. Why would a mum feel guilty for going and sleeping or for laughing or watching a movie, right? So we need to give ourselves a break and create some space, some space to some of us don't even know what we want. I have people go, I don't even know what I want. I'm like, you haven't had the space to even sit with yourself to ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want to create? Yeah. Okay, guys, how's this feeling for you? What is what is the things that popped for you? I like to share. Pop it down below. Let me know. I love to share a little bit about what's going on in my life because I'm upgrading with you. This is a co-creation, so I love to hear from you. I love to read what's going on. I know these uh, these kind of trainings, riffs, um, downloads, channels, whatever you want to call them, uh, kind of long at the moment, but we even flow as we go. And of course we are, what day are we on? Day 16. So like, oh my God, what the heck? <laughs> it's going really fast. It's going too fast. I never want it to end and it never has to end. Um, okay. So it's really important to create the space for you and it's really important not to feel guilt because we all slip i'm having a couple of coffees a day fuck no biggie i'm gonna like detox off that second coffee and then i'm gonna go on a complete no coffee from a silent retreat i'm going to in august so it's not a big deal it's not a deal breaker so i'm not gonna feel guilty about it right i can do it again and again and again and again because i am an infinite being who gets to create my own space i get to create my own programs i get to create my own challenges i get to like share them with the world because it's my art it's my craft ah oh, needed this today i was asking for guidance today perfect and the universe shall provide working on myself creating creating space realizing how can i do this more and the question is perfect I love my space and learning to be number one in my life. Yes, so do I. I'm really into learning right now. Um, once a year, I just get really hungry, really hungry for growth and learning. I'm like listening to like two books a week. I don't even know how I've done that. I used to listen to like one a year and now I'm like, I just can't get enough of the learning and the educating and I don't have time for anything unless it's going to be serving my purpose going forward and what I want to do. But of course, we've got to remember to play. We've got to remember to play and be in the energy. And, you know, the good thing about this is when you do this type of work that I'm sharing with you, when my family comes home, it makes me a better fucking mum, straight up. Like, I had a coach say to me, I'll just kind of leave on this. I hope you guys are finding this interesting. Let me know. My, my worst fear is boring people. <laughs> But um, I asked a, my, I had a coach like years ago, maybe like three years ago. And I was always just saying, yeah, because I wanted to serve so much. Right? I didn't think about my art. I didn't think about the creativity. I didn't think about the play or the joy. Like I knew the concept of playing, but I don't know how at all. Like I was like, got to serve, got to serve, got to serve. Been working my ass off since I was 12 and my mum kept popping out children. So I was working like a mum as well. And um, yeah, so working really really hard and my my coach said you need to stop working I said I'm fucking not working like I'm barely working I'm only working a few hours a day and she said you're always working up here you're not even switching off I went oh my god is that a thing it's this, this might have been about four years ago so I'm always evolving and growing you always remember to play <laughs> the piece of the puzzle so it really got to me, like not got to me, but it really activated me. And I went, oh my God, when am I switching off? When am I switch? When am I actually stopping working? I realized that I was working 24 seven. And she said, you're working 24 seven. You work when you wake up. You work. I was like, ah, oh, I've got a whole lot of people messaged me because I had so many one-to-one -one clients and everyone was had access to me then and da 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 and I've changed all my, my business since then. But I was just, you know, going through growth in my business and learning and expanding all the things. And um, I literally was working all the time. How can you have anything new pop in when you're always fucking working? How can you grow when you're looking at your phone? As soon as you wake up, as soon as you go to bed. Scrolling, 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 right? Um, 
So now I messaged my friends and said, I'm not going to be on my phone during the day unless I'm actually working. I, I do this because it's not working for me. It's living. This is living. Talking to you is the best thing that's happened to me all day, right? Also, in my mastermind, we had a two-hour, 45-minute session. I didn't have to stay on that long. They didn't need to stay on that long. We were having too much fun doing the work. It's the work. It's the creating. It's the connecting. But we're so hard on ourselves, and we're like, we've got to study, we've got to study, we've got to do this. This doesn't get you to your space. This gets you to your space, okay? I've been creating space for myself going for walks every single day now I'm craving them exactly I'm craving getting up at five o'clock in the morning and moving my butt running you know um eating healthy not looking at my phone like listening to music not even educating myself in the morning but like I, I get up and I journal I create these these devotion practices like I'm educating myself so then people that grow with me I'm constantly growing so people can keep coming with me it's so good I set my phone on flight mode during the night. Sometimes I forget to turn it off all day. Yeah, yeah. I love that. The mastermind was awesome. Oh, my God, it was. I made Play-Doh with the kids today and played. Oh, that's so amazing. Yeah. So when we're with our children or when we are with friends, it's about quality, not quantity. Rather than having 20,000 phone calls or conversations or texts every day, I don't want to be busy being busy. I want my work my words, the wisdom that I channel through from the collective, because I can't claim it as mine, it just channels through. I really desire for it to be more powerful or more potent. So I slim down everything, right? And now, of course, I'm ready to bring some stuff back on, because I'm like, holy shit, I've created so much space. And that was from my coach saying to me, what would you do if you had so much space? And I couldn't, it was ringing me. My daughter's got a cell phone now, so they're constantly, if they're away, they're constantly ringing me. I'm like, I'm going to have to put some boundaries in place here. You can't ring mama. Mama is doing her thing. <laughs> but I think they'll probably be going to bed in a minute, so I'll be ringing them back. So creating the space of creativity, and that means the space of the brain as well. You can't play and you can't download and you can't see signs and synchronicities. My, if, if you're not in play, the biggest thing I do in MM is to bring people into their heart and out of their head. When they start thinking so much, I'm like, stop right now. Thank you very much. I need some. <laughs> Sorry, Spice Girls is coming in. Um, but it's like, and spirit makes me funny. Like, even though it's not funny, like, I know people would be cringing. My sisters will be cringing right now, but. Spirit is like, lighten up, have some fun, play, make some space. You're a big deal, but nothing else is a big deal. So show up and share and be kind and stop overthinking. Stop really thinking unless you're like, oh, great idea. I'm going to put some thought into that. Like you can't think yourself out of stuff. You can't think yourself into intuition. What would you do if you had the space? The more space I have, the more I desire, because the more I can lie there and listen to the sea. I like to lie there and just stare at the ceiling. Why do I have to constantly have something here, like entertaining my, my brain? They're all ADHD brains because that's what these systems have created. So create the space. Before I had an online business, I was like, why the hell are people always on Facebook? Boring. <laughs> Because I was out walking and running and exercising and uh, creating connections with people. And then I got an online business. It's like, oh, God, there's like a trick in here, a trick that, that addicts us, you know. So we can take we can take responsibility. We can create space, even if it's 20 minutes a day. And just like um, Catherine said, you know, it's like, oh, I was requiring some guidance today, taking back to the basics. She's done MM a couple of times. She's been in my high-level masterminds. It's like... It, Going back to the basics is profound. 20 minutes of meditation a day, sitting there and breathing for three minutes, you know. How can you create the space? That's what I want to talk about today. How can you create the space? The space for you to come into a place of creativity, of evolution, of love and expansion without thinking, but just with love. 
Okay, that is day 16. I hope you have enjoyed this. Now, please do note if you want to go into the draw to win a reading, we've got a few up for grabs. There is literally in the guide section, there is a form you can fill out. There's also a graphic. I just thought it should be somewhere in the top and it says I'm in and you can share that. You can share the link to this group. You can um, tag me so I can see. I love to see who's tagging me. I can't even believe this is happening. Half the time I jump off and go, what happened? And then I see that you shared something. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that did just happen, right? I'm not just tripping out. Oh, hey, Kelly. So good to see you. Okay, my loves, I am going to calm myself, get ready for bed, go do the dishes. We don't have a dishwasher. God forbid, first world problems. And I've got a 5 a.m. wake up call. So I'm really excited about day 17. Can't wait to see you guys there. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for showing up. It means the world to me. I've got so much more. This is just the beginning. And um, I'll see you soon. Lots of love.